Fresh Bake, we are at Universal Studios Hollywood to catch up, to catch you up on what's new with our neighbor to the north. It's a State of Universal Report. If you're familiar with our State of Disneyland reports, then you'll know that what we do with these is we walk the entire park. Uh, today we're going to walk all of Universal Studios, upper lot, lower lot. We're going to check out all the queues, all the attractions, and then discuss whatever news might be pertaining to those individual locations, which there could be quite a lot because it has been a little minute since we've been to Universal Studios. There are things happening or have begun happening since we were here last. So uh, we got some catching up to do. On the way in, though, the first thing you will notice is that they are still doing a, uh, a reservation system. It's a virtual queue. It's not a reservation system. It's a virtual queue to get into Super Mario Land. Now, uh, it wasn't. It was wide open. Uh, we, we, it's about noon, I think, as I recorded that. Which and there were there were times there were time slots available. <laughs> there were time slots available for right now if I wanted it. But uh, I've got some work to do upstairs before we go down there, so I chose something like 140, I think. Uh, but if that, is, if that doesn't work out for you, which it should, if you've also got the Express Pass, they still have that thing where it's wide open for uh, anybody who has an Express Pass after 3 p.m. Uh, that's attached to their, their annual pass. So if I don't make it to my 140 or whatever, I'm going to head down there at 3 o'clock and check in on Super Mario World. But first, let's start taking a tour of what's happening up here in the upper lot. So I guess we're gonna take a left. <laughs> I just realized I've never done this before at Universal. I have no, I don't have a route. I have a very definite route at Disneyland and at DCA. I have a very definite route of whenever I do like a full walkthrough of the park. I don't know my route here. So we're just gonna make a left and see what happens. Look, it's Frankenstein's monster and the Bride of Frankenstein. You know, people, they, they go out of their way to remind folks sometimes it's not Frankenstein, it's Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein was a doctor. But if she's the bride of Frankenstein, then wouldn't she be the doctor's bride and not the bride of Frankenstein's monster? Or shouldn't it be the bride of Frankenstein's monster? Look, it's the Scooby-Doo gang. They look great. I bet you guys didn't think you were going to get any of that hard-hitting commentary here on State of Universal. So... Uh, I, normally when I do a state of Disneyland report, we talk first about accessibility. That's not a problem here at Universal. Everybody's welcome. There is no reservation system here. So as long as the park is not full, you can come in, which I don't think they ever get to that point. But, and I've been here on some insanely crowded days. The day after Christmas, whew, you guys, seriously, the day after Christmas was the busiest day I've ever experienced in any park ever. Oh, we got our first attraction. We're at the uh, Secret Life of Pets attraction. 65 minute standby. Wow. There's your standby queue out here. This is your, there's a lot of queue space inside that building. Uh, a lot of switchbacks and rooms to go through, but that's also a, a very hefty, uh, you know, exterior queue going on there. This is one of those attractions that you can use your express pass on, but you have, to, I think they use virtual queue for this as well. So yes, yes, they are still doing virtual queue. I just checked with a couple of cast members. <laughs> they are still doing virtual queue, but it's off right now. I checked the app to see if I can get in the virtual queue, but it's off. They turn it off uh, when it's not quite busy enough, I guess. 65 being near the threshold, but they don't turn it on until it gets about over 70 or so. So it's right now it's standby only, or uh, you can have, if you have Express, you can get in there. That meets up for about halfway through the standby queue inside the, the actual uh, inner queue there, and it's about 20 minute wait right now. This is exciting. <laughs> I'm already having fun. I feel like I have learned so much in just this first 10 or 15 minutes. Because I, whenever I come to Universal, it's usually a very casual situation, one where I'm not you know eager to like study and look at queues and do any kind of research for like I am doing. Disneyland is almost always an analytical situation for me, but Universal is more about just having a good time. But today we're analyzing. I love it. 
I don't know why I came in here. We're in su uh, Silly Fun Land or whatever it's called. There is an attraction in here. There's two, uh, yeah, one attraction, this thing right here. It's a five minute wait. It's your basic uh, spinner. I've actually been on that once <laughs> uh, during a, some sort of AP event. This is kind of fun. I wouldn't mind taking Sophia in here. I've never wanted to come in here before, but with Sophia, she might enjoy like this situation right here. And that's it for Super Silly Funland. Take care. Minion Cafe. No, thank you. There is so much food here that I will never ever eat. <laughs> <laughs> that might be one of them. Man, the food here is just not very good. Okay, you know what? I think we're going to take a left over here. This used to be one of my favorite viewing areas to catch the construction of Mario Town. But I think we're going to get some nice views of the demo that's happening right now at the Animal Actors Attraction, which is down the way a little bit. But from here, if you look to your right, You'll see, uh, you'll see the demo, it's happening. Man, there's something about demo that just makes me get excited. <laughs> demo anywhere makes me get excited because it represents potential. It's a comment that I often make about Hollywood backlot when people say, hey, what do you want to, what would you like to see at the backlot? And I would say, I, I say, I would, I would prefer a, a, a vacant lot right now over what they have because at least it means they're doing something. What we just saw there, they're, they're just in a pure demo phase right now. Uh, they're, they're tearing down the Animal Actors building. Nothing has been confirmed by Universal as of yet, but even though there is, there is concept art, we've talked about this in a previous video, the, the, the going rumor, the, I mean, we're, we're like 90%, I think, most people are, that it's gonna be a Fast and Furious roller coaster. A uh, uh, one of those you know that kind of that, that, that can drip a roller coaster that can drip, which is like the action that you see on uh, uh, Cosmic Rewind or or the you know Turtle Talk with or <laughs> Turtle Talk <laughs> the Crush Coaster at Paris, uh, you know where it can drift around a corner, but it's a roller coaster. Well, I guess so. It's Cosmic Rewind. Anyway, uh, that's the that's the going rumor that it's going to go where the Animal Actors attraction was, plus among other things. You know, elsewhere, but uh, they're 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 strictly in a demo phase right now. They're tearing that down. It's going to be a while. But then again, when I say that, it's not going to be like Disneyland a while. It's going to be Universal a while, which could be just a couple of years. Disneyland will take five years to build that attraction, or more. But uh, they build much quicker at Universal for whatever reason. Got a close up of that uh, backhoe that we just saw, or the excavator. That's all we can see right there, it's just the edge, but yeah. That's super close. Here's the wall, construction wall around Animal Actors. It's a roller coaster that is going to, uh, rumored to traverse down the hill a little bit towards the fire station, you know, the back lot tour, where the tram goes by that fire station on your right, it's supposed to head down into that part of the path alongside the the mountain which would be amazing the thought the thought of that being in a, a reality just blows my mind a little bit i don't know why i don't have a very uh creative mind when it comes to stuff like that so maybe it's not hard at all i don't know but that really that sounds impressive I wonder what these guys are doing they're installing something probably uh a a scrim of some kind they're gonna cover the the view right here because this is well exposed. They're going to start demoing this building. Oh, by the way, special effects show also. Look, they've already stripped that part right there. But the special effects show is also closed. Uh, that, I think I feel like that's what this whole thing that they've been constructing here. They're going to need to obscure that. Which is, I mean, that's too bad. But <laughs> that would be so cool if we could watch them destroy that. But yeah, there you go. Uh, special effects show is going to get demoed as well. Permanently closed. This is exciting. Very, very exciting. I've heard that you can hear the sounds of a roller coaster. They're piping in the sounds of a roller coaster and screaming people, etc., alongside the, the path of you know where that where the coaster would be. It's an obvious indication, it's a hint that that's what their plan is. Uh, I, I haven't heard it yet from where, from where I've been, 
But uh, we're going to do the uh, the tour later, probably after 3 o'clock also. We'll do the tour later and see if we can't uh, hear those sounds. For now, let's take a quick stop into Harry Potter Town. Crowds are not bad so far that I have observed. I haven't felt... Well, then again, you know... Well, I don't know. I don't. I don't really have a baseline for what is truly crowded for Universal, other than those like, that exceptional day that I mentioned for the day after Christmas. But that's not normal. That is abnormal. The queue for three broomsticks is outside. That's never a good sign. The three broomsticks is one of the slowest service restaurants that I have ever experienced in my life. It takes forever forever to get an order placed in there. I mean, I... Eh. Ollivanders, 15 minutes. I need to do more reps here at Universal to find out how, if that's long or typical or what. Oh, that's right, we gotta talk about that projection show that is happening right now at Universal Studios. I mean, it's not happening tonight. They just finished a, a, a three-day stretch in May, last May, and it's coming back later this June, which we'll be attending, uh, and it's going to be running again. There, there's one more run left, June 17th through August 13th. We're going to be here for one of those nights. I can't recall. I think it's the 24th, but I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's a really cool-looking effect show that happens all along the rock work there on, on top of the castle. It's kind of yes. neat. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that before, it, before the run ends. As for the attraction, Forbidden Journey, golly, that's just gorgeous. Well done, Universal. That is just gorgeous. 60-minute uh, standby wait. You can actually see the queue out here, which is atypical from my past experiences. Very rarely do I ever uh, run into a situation where it's super, super busy here. Oh, yeah, they're going down there into the little the, the wooded area. 60 minutes is, is pretty good, pretty long for Forbidden Journey. Wow, well, okay, I can officially say it is a busy day here at Universal. Fly to the Hippogriffs. 50 minutes, 50. Right. Last time I was here, I, I walked straight on that attraction. I never stopped. I walked all the way through the queue and into my vehicle without stopping. Wait, went up to 25 minutes while we were doing our recon at the back half of the land. So yeah, that's further supporting the idea that it's at least busy here at Harry Potter Town. <laughs> like that queue for butterbeer right now, my goodness. By the way, only place to get a hot butter beer right now is at Three Broomsticks. Normally you can get it at the Hogshead, but they are saying that they're not serving that right now. I was going to get one. We're gonna have to wait. I'm gonna have to find myself a mid-report treat here at Universal Studios. What am I talking about? Of course it's gonna be. <laughs> of course it's gonna be a butter beer of some kind. Because there's nothing else here that's like, oh my God, you gotta get that. Uh, so I, I'm probably gonna have to either get it early in the report, I'm not gonna get one right now. Uh, or I'm gonna have to change Harry Potter Town where it sits in the rotation. Maybe I'll do it after I do the bottom, the lower lot, which is where we're heading now because it's almost time for our uh, Super Mario Town reservation, virtual key spot. Never had a Lard Lad's donut. I suppose I should. They've got a maple bacon one. You don't have to get the pink one. You can get a maple bacon. I have had a burger, a crusty burger. It's terrible. I'd like to have a word with these folks. <laughs> but okay, so Simpsons Town. This was in the news recently. Well, I don't know if news is the right word, but it was off. The Simpsons Land was off. The map, the park map on the on the app, it disappeared. And you know, Disneyland folks, you know, when anything happens at all on the app for Disneyland, people lose their mind. 
so the, the, you know rumors were going around that maybe this was the beginning of the end kind of thing it's back on that and you know obviously it's still open the Simpsons ride Krusty Land ride is 70 minutes right now uh, I do think that there's a very real chance that uh, Simpsons Town may be coming to an end in the near future by that you know five years or so the licensing agreement comes up in 2028 uh, Universal licenses the, the right to create Simpsons based attractions in a land like this here obviously oh no she's gonna blow oh I think we're okay we're okay uh, the easy answer though to that would be heck no Disney doesn't want to they're not going to re-up that agreement because they own Simpsons now they're not going to re-up that agreement with Universal why would they want to help the competition but I'm here to tell you that it's not that's not a written story there is a model for licensing properties that you aren't going to be using yourselves Disney's not going to build a Simpsons attraction not in any Disney park they're never gonna do that it's never you're never gonna see I don't think anyway a Simpsons land at Walt Disney World never so what are they gonna do with it well they can get paid tens of millions of dollars or more you know by Universal to keep this land going and it doesn't cost them anything and that's something that Disney has been you know they've been looking to do that kind of thing of late obviously we know about Cotino Cotino is a is a property that Disney doesn't own Disney doesn't operate all they're doing is licensing the Disney name and the Disney brand to this land uh, management company and they get a little they get a licensing deal out of it I don't see why they wouldn't want to do the same for something like this having said that we just had a conversation about uh, the Fast and Furious attraction and it may or may not have to occupy some of this space we're very close we're very very close to where that uh, roller coaster would be and probably where the queue would be I believe the queue is going to be about where the special effects building was that's the you know according to concept art but it may have to you know it may have to occupy some of the space plus I mean I don't know if they're in I don't even know if they want to be in the Simpsons business anymore although this place is jamming it's very busy here at Simpsons Town the Simpsons, the, a terrible ride is doing 70 minutes so who knows people love Simpsons yeah. Okay, so we're gonna head down to the lower lot. It's just about time for our virtual queue for Simpsons Town. Also, By the way, do you guys see that queue in there for Cletus' chicken? I'm gonna have to try Cletus' chicken in Simpsons Town. That might have to be my next stop before we head down there. A couple of Halloween Horror Nights mazes, is that what they call them? Experiences are under construction right here behind the mummy attraction. That was, if I'm not mistaken, that was the classic creatures maze which was excellent I, I was really impressed with that one you know with the uh, Frankenstein and werewolf and that kind of thing that was probably the highlight of my night last year and then back there between stage 14 and 16 I don't I mean we don't know what any of these are yet we're gonna talk about that in a little bit but we don't know what uh, any of the uh, experiences are yet I, th I want to say is that the one where is that where the weekend was I want to say that's where the Either the weekend or, or Killer Clowns. Maybe, or was Killer Clowns the year before? Now I can't remember. I was unexpectedly impressed with the Killer Clowns from Outer Space Maze. Whenever, whenever that was. I can't remember now. But that was pretty great. <laughs> that film was bizarre and insane. And so was that maze. It is busy. I, I, I kind of let my guard down a little bit. You know, I, I, I said, oh, you know, the, the wait times were for now. The virtual queue is for now to get into Super Nintendo World. It must not be that pack. But, I mean, Universal is more. It has proven to be more than just Mario Town. People are going there. It's, it's probably going to be busy in there for sure. But they're, de they're definitely doing other things. Or... Sorry, what? Uh, 
<laughs> I mean, that's a really good meet and greet right there. <laughs> that was really good. Uh, the other thought I was having is that it's also doing its job, Mario Town is, in terms of bringing more people in and then sending them to the rest of the park. Can't get in right now? No problem. We'll go do, you know, the, you know, the rest of Universal. It's doing its job. It's, job. it's doing what it was supposed to do, and that is create more opportunity, more business for Universal as a whole. Exactly how I left it. Nothing has changed. It is still barely maneuverable in here. Wow. And by the way, uh, it's we've been here for a little under two hours, and what once looked like a completely wide open virtual queue system where I could get one for right now if I wanted, when I booked it at around noon, they are now all gone. All the virtual queue uh, spots are gone. Now, I don't know if that meant there was only a few, like, it just it just gave you a window. It didn't say how many were left, but what, however many there were are gone an hour and a half later. <laughs> Guys, it's Tuesday. <laughs> just like I left it. Uh, okay, so Bowser's is 120 minutes. The Mario Kart ride, 120 minutes. I haven't checked uh, single rider yet, but that's an option. I may actually try to ride today if single rider isn't too bad. Toadstool Cafe is still, I mean, that's, that's more impressive than Bowser's in terms of, you know, just the popularity, the difficulty it is to, to take advantage of, to enjoy. Toadstool Cafe. Completely booked. There are no reservations for, at all today. The queue that you're looking at here is the queue for people who have reservations. They're just waiting to get in. There, the, and it's a, this is a big place. Toadstool is not small. There are 200 tables in there, probably. <laughs> Unbelievable. And it's just very difficult to walk around. They do not appear to have solved any of the issues that they were experiencing, you know, when the, when the land first opened. Not that I would have expected it to in the sense that uh, the, the issue is that it's too popular. And how do you solve that? I don't know. But there's still, but you still, I mean, that's still an issue, right? The fact that there is only one place to eat in here. Not even a, not even a hot dog cart. If they so much as had a hot dog cart or a pretzel cart, that could go a long way to fulfilling some people's, you know, wanting to eat while you're in here. Uh, the, the cues for those, the, the queues for the mini games are enormous. I mean, it's just, it is incredible how popular Mario Town has remained uh, and it's going to be in the future. I just hope that they find some way to uh, increase the footprint of this land because there's so much more that they can do and uh, people will gobble it up. Well, I think I can cancel that talk of getting on single rider for Mario Kart. That's the single rider queue. Uh, it is all the way around that top level, that's a good sized queue for single rider, so we're gonna uh, evacuate this scene here and try to go find something to eat. They took out two of the telescopes up here in the little viewing platform. There used to be one right here. There used to be three. One there, another one right here. Now there's just that set over there. The exit is a rest spot. <laughs> There's nowhere to sit in there. So people come to the exit to sit down and rest before they leave. Because if you leave, you can't come back in unless you have an express pass after 3 p.m. I mean, consider that. That brings up, well, I'm talking about with the food situation. They have a food problem. Because, well, for a lot of reasons, but 
The virtual queue system creates urgency uh, for the food especially, but it also makes people stay in a situation longer than they want to be because they're afraid to leave. You can't eat. You can't leave to go eat because if you leave, then you can't come back in unless there unless there was you know like I said you have a an express pass after 3 p.m. But I mean, man, that's a tough situation. All right, once more into the breach, fresh baked down here in the lower lot. Let's check in on our neighbor while we're eating Jurassic World. Usually that is the most popular attraction in the entire park. Well, it was anyway until Mario showed up, but uh, Jurassic World is now 80 minutes, which is about what I would have expected today. Let's uh, travel inside. I was gonna maybe contemplate trying out Express here, which looks like it actually still, well, boy, that's a pretty good queue for Express. That's probably 20 minutes. They do also sir, or offer a single rider, which we'll go check that out as well. One of these days, I'm gonna have to bring Sophia. Play around that little dino zone, that and that water park at Super Silly Funland. Single rider is about 20 deep. Maybe another day. Wow. <laughs> wow. This isn't as bad as it was that one uh, Christmas, day after Christmas, but it's still not great. We still haven't found the back yet. 80 minutes. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, well, we did, we made it almost all the way to the uh, wedding reception tent. It is, oh my God, we are, we're into the wedding reception tent. My goodness. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, I've seen this whole tent fall once, but that's about as far as you can get. The tram tour actually goes right by there. Let me remind everyone that there's nothing special about today. It's just a normal random Tuesday. I mean, it is the beginning of June, so I guess we're in the summer season. There are kids off school. However, it has been my experience that the first week or two of the summer season is usually still pretty light, but that is not the case. It is definitely fully busy here at the lower lot and at all of Universal. All right, let's open the gates. Oh, no. Good. Eyes on me. Good and blue. Blue and blue. Oh. Eyes on me. Blue. More like it. Okay? <laughs> Calm down. And we're moving. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I wanted to do an update on the mummy. I <laughs> How did the vlogger cross the road? Oh my goodness. Okay, here we go. 60 minutes standby for the mummy. I get out of here. <laughs> I, I just realized I forgot to check and listen for the sounds of a coaster while on the uh, escalators, which I think you might be able to hear them from there. Yeah, cancel that. You can't hear anything from here. Uh, the music is just too loud. So maybe on the tram tour, which we're heading to next. Now, I'm not 100% on this, but I think, is that not the seat? I've never been to the animal actor show or the stunt show. I've never seen or been inside either one of those buildings. But I believe, isn't that part of it right there? That's like the seat, the stands, the grandstands, the viewing area. So we should be seeing that demoed as well. This will be interesting. And then just going off memory uh, from the concert art, I want to say that, that the roller coaster would be happening like right in that space, the queue would be on the other side of that grandstand and then part of the track would actually be right here. And then it would come back up. Imagine 
being on the tram tour and seeing all this happening around you, that would be really exciting. There goes a tram right now. Let's get on that thing. 45 minutes standby for the studio tour. That's actually not bad for the studio tour. That's one of those attractions that almost always has an incredibly long wait. Two things that this place really needs is more Harry Potter and more Mario Town. Harry Potter's right behind us. Where do you put more of each? That's why I'm asking that because we're in a neighborhood where I feel like you could fit a little bit more Harry Potter around here, right? Down here next to the tram, maybe move the tram loading area somewhere else. Also, it is kind of a quick view, but off to the right to get a bit of an elevated look at Super Nintendo World off in the distance. And of course, here at Universal, we are a real working movie and television production facility. Our property here is roughly 400 acres, and it does take it. It was actually named for the fictional Fire Station 51 for our television series Emergency, which shot on our property back in the 1970s. But this is where we leave the real world behind and continue on into the cinematic world of make believe. Now, as you can see in the stage 14, nothing course, is happening the back here. There is nobody back here. Kaling. Recently, the rider strike has there. killed all the action back in the back lot tour. Mission control for <laughs> the rain, a thunderstorm, whatever we want right here on the back lot. And it is nice in the warmer summer months. We come down here in like August. It's nice to get refreshed. Oh, too much rain. Last left out. Why get close? Look out. I got so. I got so. Check on out of the Bates Motel. Norman is uh, not exactly happy to see us. Tool sets used in the production of Academy Award winner Jordan Peele's most recent film, Nope. Uh, Jupiter's claim getting a bit of uh, road maintenance done, so let's make our way out to the. Uh... All right, I heard nothing. I didn't hear anything. No sounds of screaming, no roller coaster sounds. I mean, I'm sure it did happen, but maybe just not anymore or maybe I just couldn't hear it because you know I don't hear it so good uh, other things to note on the tram tour I might as well give you some updates here they have closed the the earthquake scene where you know you go inside the uh, the subway station that's all closed off now that's gonna be closed for darn near a year I think it's um, I want to say it's coming back in May of 2024 spring of 2024 they didn't say which month spring of 2024 also, you saw the, the Nope set is currently unavailable. We just did a drive-by on that. You can see that they're doing some work there in the front. I actually got footage of that from the parking structure uh, at the ET parking structure. You can see it's just concrete, I think. So that show is going to stay. It'll be back whenever they finish that. Uh, also, while I was looking for views of Halloween Horror Nights, that's one thing we haven't covered yet, of any sort of houses that are being constructed that's usually a place the curious george structure was a place to see uh last year it was where the halloween house was they have you can't see out those <laughs> the, the 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 viewing areas are, they've closed it off so you can't get any footage from from that parking structure anymore i i checked that out this morning and i was like dang did they really close that up but yeah in fact they did so we're not able to see any of the houses from the parking structure. We just saw those two near the uh, escalators on the way to the lower lot. So far, we know of only one confirmed house 
for uh, this year for Halloween Horror Nights, and that's the Chucky House. I'm kind of new to the Halloween Horror Nights scene. I've only I've only been twice now, uh, or you know, two years. So I don't. I'm not part of the uber focused. <laughs> I know that the the lead up to Halloween Horror Nights is one of the biggest deals. And on either coast, either here or in Florida, people speculate on that more than they speculate on just about anything when it comes to theme park news, it seems like. I, that's all over social media. But so far, we have just the one confirmed house. Uh, but we'll keep you guys up to date. You know, we'll be doing more reports from Universal in the coming months leading up to Halloween Horror Nights. We will be going this year. We went last year, but we didn't, we're not going to film it. just doesn't have a place on, on, on a fresh, big Disney channel anyway. But... Who knows? You know, something might happen, and we'll see. But but we are going to go. We do go. Uh, same thing for Not Scary Farm, for that matter. Which, by the way, hopefully we'll be doing a State of Knots update here in the near future. I just have to get a pass. I let my pass expire. Guys, when I tell you that I'm just so busy with Disney that stuff, let me. I, I need. A, anyway, I really want to. I just I have just so much to do. But that, I guess, is our uh, State of Universal report for this month. Hopefully we get to do these once a month like we're doing the others. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Let us know if you have any comments or questions about this or any requests. I would appreciate that. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching, everybody. We love you. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. Fresh bake.